Hey everyone, and welcome to another video on building application integration patterns on AWS with serverless, Terraform, and .NET 6. Now, in my video a few weeks ago, I touched on DynamoDB streams, and we covered it really quickly. So what I wanted to do this week was time to take a step back to the solution we built a few weeks ago and have a bit of a deep dive into how DynamoDB streams can be incredibly powerful in enabling you to add some event-driven um, integrations to your existing system. So what I've done is I've taken the product API that we were using as a sample and added a couple of other endpoints. So we now have a create product endpoint, a delete product endpoint, and an update product endpoint. And we're going to use these additional endpoints to actually add some more event-driven features to our product service. Now, all of these API endpoints are very simple. It's a pretty straightforward CRUD-based API. We can manipulate products, but now we want to add some additional event-driven functionality to this API without actually affecting the latency of this API. Because at the minute, this API is extremely simple. It's just interacting with DynamoDB and responding. And because of the, the low latency that DynamoDB gets, if we started to add some event publishing to our actual API endpoints, that's going to directly impact the latency of our API. So if we're building CRUD APIs on top of DynamoDB, using DynamoDB streams really easily lets us start to add some event-driven functionality. So let's have a look at how we do that. Okay, so if we go over to have a look at our Terraform code now, um, and if we have a look at our API, at the top of here, we've got our DynamoDB table. If I just zoom that in a little bit. And we've already enabled streams on our DynamoDB table, and we've set our stream to output both new and old images. Now, what that means is that if I create a new record in DynamoDB, um, sorry, if I update a record in DynamoDB, what that means is if I update a record in DynamoDB, I'll get both the old version of that, what that used to look like, and also the new version. You can also set that to be only the new or only the old, but we want both. So we've already got all of the changes to Dynamo streaming out into this stream. And we've also built our stream handler. So if we go and have a look at the event handling section in um, our Terraform code, we've already got this DynamoDB stream handler Lambda function that we're using to publish the create product event, product created events to our product created topic. Um, and we map that um, event source mapping here. So we say an event source of our stream ARN should map to our DynamoDB stream handler function. So now that we've added some additional API endpoints for update and delete, now let's actually map them to an SNS topic. So I'm first gonna create a couple of additional topics um, for both the product updated, so we can publish our product updated events, the product updated, and also a product deleted topic as well, because we want to separate um, our events. We want to be very explicit about what kind of data is being published to each topic. And then we also need to pass in these additional topic ARNs as environment variables so that we know um, in our Lambda function what the ARNs are that we need to publish to. So let's update that, product deleted, um, update that there, and also update that there. So our, our, our stream handler now has permissions to publish to all three of the topics, and we also know the ARNs at um, in our environment variables. Okay, so let's go and have a look at our actual function code now. So if I open up my DynamoDB stream handler, and just zoom that in a little bit, um, you see we've now got, um, we're already mapped to this DynamoDB event, and this DynamoDB event comes from the, the um, Amazon Lambda DynamoDB events uh, NuGet package. So we've already got a NuGet package that gives us this plain old C-sharp object to reflect the DynamoDB event payload. And then what we do when, when the um, DynamoDB event comes in, we get multiple records from the stream at any one time. So we loop over all the records that are included in this event payload. And then what we're doing at the minute is we're saying that if this isn't an insert, so if it's a, it's a delete or an update, 
We just want to ignore it because remember, we were only initially publishing product created events, but now we're now adding some additional types of events. I've also updated the stream handler to before it does anything to actually log the contents of each um, record that gets processed. So let's go and have a quick look at what that looks like. If I flick over to the AWS console now, um, and I go and look at my CloudWatch logs for my DynamoDB stream handler. When my internet connection wakes up, we will see that there's already some logs. So I've already pre-published some events, just testing this earlier. And um, we can actually have a look at the data that comes in. So you see here, we've got um, the start of a record from our stream. And then we've got, um, this is the actual content that comes in. So you see, we've got the keys that get processed and the key is um, there. There's my product ID. And then we've also got the new image, which you can see there. And also in here somewhere, there'll be the old image. So the old image is actually empty in this case, which tells me this must have been an insert. And if I look further up in my logs now, I can also see the entirety of all the records that came in. Um, so this particular event, this record only had a single insert. So this is the data that actually comes in to um, our DynamoDB stream. Now, if I go off and run some unit tests now, so I've got some unit tests that are actually gonna do a create, an update and a delete. So if I run my integration tests that will actually then hit my API endpoints and this will then create, update and then delete a given product, which will now give us some additional um, DynamoDB stream records in our CloudWatch logs. Awesome, so the tests have completed. So if we come back to CloudWatch logs now and give this a few seconds to update, 12, 11, there we are. And if we take a look at these records now, we've got one record here, uh, one stream record here. Um, and this one is, if we just open up this log record. So this first one we received still only had a single record and that was our insert. So we've got one record from the stream there. And then if I go and have a look at this second set of events here, um, this one has now got a remove. So you see there's been an insert and a remove that have happened here. So that's our create and update, and then also our delete of that DynamoDB record. So now that we know what our records look like when they come in, let's actually go and have a look at updating our code now. Um, so we've got our function here, and let's just expand these topic ARNs at the top to give us our um, updated topic, our deleted topic. And then we'll just rename this one here to um, the created topic ARM. And we'll update our environment variables as well. So we've got product created, product updated, and product deleted. Okay, so we've got our three topics there now. Okay, so let's start to update some of this code now. Um, and I'm gonna do this with a switch statement. So the first thing I'm gonna need is to set my topic name and my um, and my event payload. And I'm gonna set that um, before I actually get into my switch. And then when I actually do my publish to um, SNS, my topic horn will now come from that variable. Um, and my... Uh, message will come from the event payload. Um, oh, and I'm also gonna to need to update my event type attributes. If I update that to be for event type, and set that to be an empty string for the moment. And then we've got our event type coming in there. So this data is all gonna be set from a little switch now, and the switch is gonna be based on um, the event uh, do, 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 the event name that comes in from Dynamo. And that is going to be based on either um, an insert, and we'll just put some dummy code in there for the moment. Um, it's gonna be an insert, um, it's gonna modify if something's been updated, or remove if an item's been deleted. Okay, so we know we can set our topic name straight away if the topic name is if it's an insert event, if it's a modify event, we know we want to publish to an updated topic. And if it's a remove event, we want to publish to our deleted topic. And we can also set our event type because we know our event type is going to be hard coded based on what our type of event is. So 
we'll just put that out there and that'll be product updated and then product deleted. Mr. Sim, Mr. Call on there. And then the final thing we can actually do is set our event payload. Now the event payload is going to come from a different place depending on what our type of event is. So if the if it's an insert event, that event payload is actually going to come from our event dot dot new image because that this has been a newly created image, um, and we can create um, first if we do document dot from document dot from attribute map we can actually load a dynamo db document there so that would be for dynamo db document then we can load that as our um, product object product eto and i can do that using my dynamo db product adapter and from a dynamo db item to a product so we've now got that um, DynamoDB item to product. Yeah, DynamoDB document dot. So we don't actually need that line at all. So if I go like that and like that and like that, we can skip that line of code. And then my actual event payload becomes JSON serialized product DTO. Okay, awesome. Now, if it's a product updated event, the actual um, DTO that we're going to load is going to come from a slightly different place. It's going to, um, well, yeah, if it's a modify event, this is actually going to be, we're going to load that from the new image. Um, and then if it's a deleted event, it's going to be slightly different because we're going to want to load that from our deleted event. We're going to want to load that from our old image. And let's drop that into there. Okay, awesome. So we're now, if it's an insert, a modify, or a remove, we're setting our variables differently. And then the actual um, SNS publish will happen using our variable names. Okay, so now I have all our code here, and I have realized that I have completely forgotten how to write a switch statement. So then returns actually need to be breaks. Okay, so we're saying that if we've got an insert, we're going to set our variables based on the new image and um, product created event. If something's been updated in our DynamoDB table, then obviously it's going to be updated. If it's been removed from the Dynamo, then deleted. And then obviously down at the bottom when we do the publish with SNS, we're going to set these values from our variables. Um, and we should probably just have one final step here just to say that if, um, just as a way of error handling that if string dot is null or empty if our topic name doesn't get set um, then we can probably log that uh, log warning and say um, invalid event type and we just want to return there okay cool so let's go and actually publish these changes now with um, our deployment script so if you recall um, because we're deploying with Terraform, I've actually built a little deployment PowerShell script to first run our unit tests, then to publish all of our application code, and then actually apply the Terraform changes. Um, so I'm just going to pause the video now while this finishes deploying. Okay, awesome. So the unit, the, the deployment has completed. So if I just flip back to my unit, unit tests now and rerun my, my integration tests, sorry then we can actually go and have a look at our logs and see exactly what is getting published. Okay, so we, here we are back in CloudWatch and we can have a look at our latest set of logs. Uh, and you can see we've got an event here that is publishing event data to our product deleted topic. Um, if I look back through a couple more of these, um, we see we've got an event there being published to our product updated topic. Um, and then if I go back one more group of logs, you see we've got another set there being published to our product created topic. So what we've done now is we've added event driven um, integrations to our existing API without actually changing a single line of code in our existing API. And this is incredibly powerful if you've got existing applications today using DynamoDB and you want to introduce a more event-driven architecture to maybe some back-end processing without affecting your current API, 
you can do that. Enable DynamoDB streams, set up a Lambda function to handle that stream, and then you can manipulate the events based on the insert, the modify, or the remove, and publish them as you see fit. As always, the code for this is on GitHub. You can find the GitHub link in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe, please share, and I will see you next week.